recording here. And we're live. Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into things. A podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights in Entertainment. This is episode nine. A Marvelous Night in Philly. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen. I am here with my lovely co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Michelle? I'm doing uh, marvelous. Marvelous. I was going to say fabulous. There went, oh. you go. Now, you I, tricked me. <laughs> I, I happen to notice you have a, a Star Wars shirt on. I, I happen to have a Star Wars shirt Do on Do you? Too. Wow. How did that happen? Um, and, and this will... Uh, I think play into a few of the topics that we'll be talking about you today. You think? Just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so we'll have just a quick rundown here. We've got our Disney detective segment that we've got a few interesting Disney uh, pieces of news to talk about. we got a few trailers, some news on Disney parks, some Disney streaming, and then we'll be, blah, blah, blah. we will move into our... <laughs> See, I'm so excited for the topics today. I just can't even talk. <laughs> just want to get into it. <laughs> um, for our entertainment news, we have uh, a breakdown of uh, an event that we attended last night mm -hmm. that was a members-only um, opening of an exhibit that we had a, a fantastic time at. We have some Walking Dead news and uh, some reminders of Princess Diana's death, unfortunately. And then, as always, we will uh, wrap up with our insightful picks of the week. So, let's get right into it. So, go for Disney Detective. Sure. So, our first thing we're going to talk about, which is something that actually came up that I thought was a joke. Because I think it was originally released around April Fool's Day, and it was that they're going to be giving out bathroom passes at Disneyland in Galaxy's Edge for when you're waiting on a line and you need to go to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> like I said, when I first saw this headline, I, I honestly, I thought it was a joke. But because they're expecting the wait times to be six plus hours... You're going to need to go to the bathroom, and obviously they're not going to have restrooms along the the queue line. It wasn't designed that way. So what they're going to do is going to offer you a bathroom pass, and it'll allow you to leave the line, go to the restroom, and then you're going to re-enter through a fast pass line where you'll have to wait until the rest of your party comes up to that area and basically rejoin the line. <laughs> Just can't. I don't know. Well, and it's smart in some respects. Unfortunately, it's also required, I think, at this point in time because when <clears throat> yeah. you're going the just the fact that Disney is going to allow people to wait to, in line. to wait in line for 6 hours is unacceptable. Right. I'm right. sorry. I don't understand why they don't do some sort of reservation exactly. system. Exactly. You know, like, okay, if you're going to require them to wait in line for two hours, which for me, I would never wait two hours in line anyway, but say, okay, you come back between this time and your wait time is going to be two hours. This way, I'm just thinking the fire hazard of it all. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah. You know, and you figure too, with a six hour line, most of the line isn't going to be inside in the ride. Right. Well, not only do you have bathroom breaks you have to worry mm -hmm. about, but 
how are you going to feed these people? Right, I mean, and you, you and can't stand in line for six hours and not have anything to eat or right, drink. Right, and it did say um, that they were going to be doing uh, entertainment for people while they were waiting online. There was going to be food. I'm, you know, I'm guessing they're going to have, you know, their vendors going up and down the line. You know, at some point, obviously, until you probably get into the building. I'm guessing by the point you get into the building, you're probably at the hour mark or two hour mark. But from a Disney standpoint, why would you want to ruin right, someone's experience? experience? No, I get it. You figure you've got, what, maybe 10 hours in the park, and you're right. going to spend six of them? You're going to have them spend six of them sitting in line. Right. Well, well the thing is, anybody that's doing that knows they're going to be in line for six hours. There's nobody, unless you're there at rope drop, and you figure rope drop, you know, Probably people are going to be lining up at, you know, one o'clock in the morning or the, you know, the, the day before waiting outside, you know, unless you're that first, you know, but couple there's of hundred so many people. better ways of handling this. Mm -hmm. One, you oh, could yeah. have a reservation system. Right. Which they're going to have. They're going to have. Just to get into the area. Right. Though. Just to get into the area. But that's not even to get on the ride. Right. So not you could do a reservation mm -hmm. ahead of time like you would for a dining reservation. Right. Once X number of reservations are up. I'm sorry, we don't have any more available for right. the day. Right, nobody else can get on so the ride that day. So then you let people book ahead of time, and if they can't book a reservation right. for the ride, then they pick a different day to go right. to the park. And then the other thing I'm wondering about, too, is that normally Disney's policy is as long as you are online before the close of park, that ride will stay open until the last guest gets on the ride. Are they going to do that same thing? So is somebody going to show up at, say, 10 o'clock at night? Well, they'll probably close on... the line queue down well ahead of time of park close. I guess. But they'll probably still be planning to run the ride at least an hour or two but, hours But, you know, after my park. point is is that yeah. there are different ways you can handle this. Reservations is one. A lottery is another one. Mm -hmm. Just True. like when you show up at studios and you want to get your kids into Jedi training. Right, right. Basically, there's so many slots. You show up in the morning, you get your slot in there, and if you don't get in in time, then you have to come back another day. Now right. that in the event of it being a park ride, that would kind of suck if you've only got one day in the park. Right, exactly. So that's why a reservation ahead of time, like mm -hmm. a dining reservation. Right, All right, well, right. I'm sorry I couldn't book it for today. Let but me try it tomorrow. Okay, okay tomorrow. I can book yeah. it tomorrow, so let's go to the park tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. It, um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how 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 this goes. And, you know, obviously, like I said, they're going to offer entertainment. They're going to have snacks for people waiting in line. Um, they now have their mobile app that has games that you can play, but you figure everybody's going to drain their battery, you know, yeah. just, just waiting in line. So it, it'll be interesting to see how, how this, how this goes. So I, I'm glad we're not going to be there. I will say that much. <laughs> that is true. So what else do we have? Um, the other big news is Disney plus their streaming service. That's been uh, going around. They finally announced details about it that it will be launching on November 12th. It'll cost $7 a month or 70 for a 12 month subscription, which works out to a little less than $6 a month. It's gonna launch in the US and then expand globally. Um, and the first year they're expected to offer uh, 25 uh, series, uh, which will include this new Star Wars show, the live action, um, the Mandalorian, plus 10 new movies and specials, uh, 7,500 episodes of existing shows, more than 100 recent titles, and a library of 400 movies. So, you know, doesn't sound too shabby overall. Price doesn't seem to be... The price is in incredibly reasonable for a Disney service. I'll, I'll say that right off the bat. Yeah, and that's, and that's something... Um, you know, knowing whatever you buy something, you know, a Disney service is usually always, you know, 10%, 20% more than a, a, a comparable yeah. service. So it was kind of interesting to, to see that. So they, they've got a surprisingly robust offering as far as, um, content mm -hmm. as well. Like I wasn't expecting... 25 new series coming out of them. Right, right. Two or three of which are Star Wars, two or three of which right. are Marvel, right. from what they've announced so far. Right. 
Um, plus, we know that they're going to be releasing all their new movies. Right, anything new is going to be through this service. Right. We don't know how how soon after if they're in the theater. That right, they and I think that. one of them was Lady in the live action Lady in the Tramp is yeah. going to go, you know, direct to that. So I don't know. Should be interesting. The content will be uh, able to be downloaded. And it's going to be available on most screens, including gaming consoles. So. That's what I thought was neat. The one gaming console that they had said they're going to make it available for is Nintendo Switch. Oh, okay. So, and that's an ideal form factor for mobile entertainment. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So that that's pretty cool. So, you know, will we add it to our list of <laughs> other streaming, you know, services that we use? It's Disney. Do we have a choice? always have a choice right do it or do it or <laughs> incur your wrath no no well and it also depends on you know what what's there you know would we actually use it so um it's got star wars on it so we'll be oh using you'll it. be using it so as uh you mentioned there were a couple of trailers that kind of dropped this week there hmm. were yeah i must have missed them you did? You missed him a whole 20 times that you watched. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Wh which one should we which one should we talk about first? Um, I think the one that we themed our shirts for. All right. So, Passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. But this is your fight. So, needless to say, that was awesome. Freaking awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Why can't it be December already? <laughs> now, I, I've sat through probably three different uh, breakdowns mm -hmm. of the trailer so far. Okay. And I've come to the conclusion, based on three different opinions... I don't want to hear it. It shows us absolutely nothing. Okay, good. That's basically it. <laughs> so I was going to say, if you were going to spoil something for me, um, I was going to cry. And I, and I think that's kind of what J.J. Abrams wanted. Right. It was, hey, here's a little taste. Right, here's... We're not going to tell you I'm anything. I'm not going to tell you anything. You can speculate all you want yep. as to who this is, who that is, who what this all is about. Here, enjoy. It is my hope that the franchise is back on track after that debacle that ryan johnson gave us mm -hmm. um with last jedi right um there's been talk that they retconned several of the uh points that he made in the last jedi that everyone universally hated even mark hamill came out and okay. disagreed with many of those decisions mm -hmm. that they made so 
hopefully this will end the saga on the right way. The right way. Mm-hmm. Yes. It that. definitely has that that feel to it. You know, it, it's definitely um you know, just what are you doing? <laughs> just, sorry, just get ready for the next one. That's all. I'm so excited. No, it, it, you know, it definitely, you know, hearing the the music, you know, Leia's theme, just I I totally lost it before even seeing Lando and you know the fact that Billy Dee's back in it again just was just like, awesome. That was just like ah, you know, and and it definitely had a, a lot of oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god when can I buy my tickets and, you know, yep. let's take off that day and just go and see it like five times that day. So very, very excited. It was, it, you know, and it was funny. There was nobody, none of my friends that saw it that didn't enjoy it. Like everyone is pumped up and like more excited for December to come along now. Now in playing devil's advocate, I was very excited when the trailer for Last Jedi came out. Then I went to see it, and I wanted to scratch my eyes out. (laughs) So hopefully this isn't the same effect. Well, and like I had shared with you, the one tweet that, you know, I saw was that if J.J. Abrams screws this up, he will forever be known as Jar Jar Abrams. Jar Jar Abrams, right. So (laughs) So we have that. So So we we did have another trailer. (laughs) We did. Which one was this one for? This one is for the Lion King. Quit lying. Life's not fair, is it, my little friend? While some are born to feast, others spend their lives in the dark. <laughs> Begging for scraps. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. While others search for what they can take, a true king searches for what he can give. Take your place in the circle of life. So yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, that that looks cool, and and I have to say, Lion King is probably up there in my my top movies. You know, Disney Disney movies. I was actually in college when it came out, um, and when um, I <laughs> so so back in the day when people were first starting to get online and had had usernames and everything, Nala was actually. Um, my my username on all my different uh, platforms, you know, when I started off. So always had that that connection. Um, the Circle of Life was just a you know powerful song. You know, when I was graduating from college, one of um, gifts from one of my fraternity brothers. Um, that's you know it was always like our thing. She actually, when I had posted it on Facebook, she's like, we have to do. Uh, a movie night, you and I, to to go see it, you know, to come full circle, you know, so many years later. So, it, you know, you know, our our one tabby cat, you know, her name was Nala, and it was all because of the Lion King. So, while Star Wars is, you know, your thing, Lion King, you know, was kind of... This was a great week for trailers to hit home for us, that's for sure. Absolutely, and I cried. I, 
you know, I cried watching Lion King, and then I'm all teary eyed now watching it. Like, oh my god, I want to watch. You know. Well, the one thing that was really interesting is we found a side by side of the '99. What was it? What was it? when did it originally come out? Uh, ninety four. Ninety four. Ninety four, I believe. So it was a side by side split screen of the current preview, the mm -hmm. teaser, and the original teaser. Right. And it was astonishing how faithful mm -hmm. Disney was to creating the recreating the same scene. Not only recreating them, but including the the modern and the original scenes right. in the trailer itself right, right. where you could literally go by scene by scene and see how they're mm -hmm. translated into the new one. Yeah, yeah. That gave me goosebumps to see yeah, that. Yeah, that one definitely, um, definitely so did. So I totally give props to Disney mm -hmm. for their yeah. their authenticity, we'll say. Absolutely. It's going to be a good year for Disney movies. <laughs> um, I, I still, you know, playing devil's advocate I like I do, how do you create a live action version of an animated feature mm -hmm. when you're computer generating all the characters that are right. in there. It's not live action at that point. It's CGI. Uh, it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'll give them full does. props for that. Mm -hmm. But it's still an animated feature. Okay. You're just using computers now. Tomato, tomato. Um, I think that was all we have for our Disney detective. Mm-hmm. So last night, uh, mm -hmm. we were fortunate enough to attend the opening of a new traveling exhibit at the Franklin Institute. Yes, we did. A friend of mine from high school, Regina, mm -hmm. was kind enough. She's a member of the Franklin Institute, and she was able to get us tickets for the exclusive opening night, mm -hmm. you know, cocktail hour, and we got to dress up and... It was cool. Fancy clothes, and you know, it's kind of neat <laughs> it was, seeing the it was date night. <laughs> it was it was kind of neat seeing the museum uh, done up like that. That right, was yeah. that was really neat. Yeah. Um, they had a panel from uh, mm -hmm. Marvel there. Uh, Marvel uh, there. Joe Caseta being uh, one of the ones that was there, and a number of other uh, high profile executives and creators from Marvel. Um, but we got to see a first look at the exhibit itself, which opens today, today April 13th. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it celebrates 80 years of Marvel history and the 10th anniversary of Marvel Studios, mm -hmm. all on the uh, eve of the release of Marvel Endgame, Endgame. Yeah. Avengers Endgame. So the exhibit itself features more than 300 original Marvel artifacts, including... From what they said last night, right. the only known co complete copy of the original Marvel uh, Marvel Comics number one, mm -hmm. uh, which was the first artifact display that you see when yes, you walk that in. Was, that was very cool. It was kind of like, why is everybody waiting in line? Why, why are we like so patiently? And then you got to it, you're like, oh, it's the Holy Grail of Comics. Yeah. Yeah, you you almost went up and paid homage to it like it was an yeah. altar or something. Yeah, you did. Um, they have a couple of immersive uh, set pieces, one mm -hmm. of which was uh, the Mirror Universe example from um, uh, Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. That was very cool. That was that was really cool. Uh, number of life size scenes, so you could sit on the couch and get a picture with the thing. Right, right. Uh, they had a life size. Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. They had Spider Man. Spider Man hanging upside down. Now I was actually going to go through and grab some of the images and put them up here, but I neglected to do that before the show. Um, so uh, maybe we'll post them up on the website. There you go. As an if, you know, just to sure. get folks to go so see people, some of the uh, stuff. Who aren't in the area that are listening that you know won't be able to take advantage of, of seeing it. Exactly. They can see the pictures. Um, what else did they have? Oh, they had the Iron Man. You could mm -hmm. digitally transform into Iron Man. Right. Uh, now, we had seen a, an example of that. That's actually using, it was using a Microsoft Connect when we saw it mm -hmm. in Disneyland. Right. I didn't get up close enough. There was too to many people to using. see what they were using. But, but basically, there's a big screen and a camera associated with you. The camera superimposes you in Tony Stark's lab. Um, it puts the armor on you and does motion capture to actually right. allow you to 
interact on the screen. You can shoot at targets and you can fly around. It's uh, it's it was it was really mm-hmm. cool. It yeah. was really cool the way they did it. Uh, they had photo ops with uh, Black Panther and Spider Man. Right. Which by the time we got done through the display and came up, uh, I was I was exhausted and beaten. And, and they were taking a break. <laughs> Oh, uh, were they really? Yeah, okay. I did see Regina posted a picture okay. later on where they did get a picture with the two of them. So, so, uh, <laughs> it, it was a great time. It mm-hmm. was a it was a great display. Uh, you saw a number of um, movie props, mm-hmm. screen used movie props, costumes. costumes from more of the recent movie. You know, basic. I think actually almost all of the movies they had. Something they, from. they had well they I know they had the costume the Spider Man costume from Homecoming right they had the Thor and what's his evil sister's name I can't think of her name but they Helena? Had Loki, Helena Helena I think it and is and they had Loki's they had Loki's helmet right they had Mew Mew <laughs> they had M- Mjolnir there. They had um, from Black Panther. They had the the costumes. They had the from Black that. Panther costume, which they're just they're awesome costumes. They, they I love were. seeing. They were those. very cool. They were very cool. Um, then we went into the Netflix room. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, that was kind of funny. <laughs> it's like it's all Netflix. So stuff. yeah, this it was is, it was Punisher, Punisher, and Daredevil, Daredevil and... Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what was the other one? With the bullet holes in the shirt. That wasn't Punisher. That was no. uh, uh, Nick. Nick something. Nick Cage. Nick Cage, yeah. <laughs> um, None of the shows that I watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched. They did have Daredevil's costume there, right, which was that, pretty cool. Yeah, that did look cool. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really cool. And then they had the Captain Marvel stuff where you could see yep. the evolution of the different you know, Captain. You could see and... what the uh, gender insensitive Captain Marvel was previously right. with Miss Marvel there. Right, right. Um, you got to see Captain America's mm-hmm. uh, original costume with Shield movie used. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, it was good. A lot of lot of photo ops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, just an overall overall good time. Oh, and they had a couple of audio displays. Right, right. One of which was. Uh, the opening sequence to the old Spider-Man cartoon right, with the right. original Spider-Man the original theme, Spider-Man and you could listen to the theme, which I thought was awesome. That was funny. Uh, and they did a similar thing for X-Men too, mm-hmm. yeah, which was which was really neat. And of course, it ended up at a really cool gift shop. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Taking a a page out of Disney's uh Disney's book. Yeah, well, you know, it's what happens when you're owned by Disney. Everything ends in a gift shop. Yep, absolutely. So. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, if you're if you're in the area in Philadelphia, there are it is a traveling exhibit. I don't have the information here. Well, it runs until I believe September second. Right. So it's there for a while. Um, from when I had looked on the regular website, you it, um you can get a ticket included with regular admission. Um, when we went last night, nothing else was included. It was just the exhibit and. And the party, um, whereas if you go during any other day, you have the whole rest of the museum, you know, to enjoy. So you could definitely do a, a full day, do the planetarium, you know, as well, and even uh, add on uh, an IMAX movie as well if you wanted to. So. Yeah, they do sell tickets for daytime hours that include the rest of the museum, mm-hmm. and they have evening hours just for the exhibit. Right, so you could do whichever you wanted to do. Yeah, I'm looking at the website now, and they don't have uh, tour dates for where it's going. Oh, where it's going to be going next. I, I do believe it is a traveling mm-hmm. show, so once it's done, it's tenure in, in the Franklin Institute. I'm sure they'll be moving on from right. there. Right, So, very cool. Very cool. Um, what was the next one that we had? We were going to be talking about Walking Dead. Yes. They announced that they are going to be doing another spinoff, um, and this doesn't have anything to do with um, the Rick Grimes spinoff that they're still planning to do. So if you are a fan of the show, you know that Rick Grimes, you know, was taken away by helicopter. Spoilers! Spoilers! Shh! Um, (laughs) So nobody knows where he went, 
but that's supposed to be another spinoff. I don't remember if that if they were talking about that being a TV movie. They, they, yeah, or, that was the rumor that I heard was they were, he was supposed to right, have movies for that. It was going to be yeah. a movie for that, but here's going to be the third series um, in that's set to debut in 2020. Um, it's supposed to be 10 episodes um, that they're actually going to start producing this summer in Virginia, which is uh, uh, pretty much near where everything else is is shot um stories written by scott m gimbal um and matt uh uh Gret? Negret. Negret, uh who will serve as the showrunner um and it's supposed to be i guess sort of a fast forward yeah, from what Where I had it's... read, it's they were using a younger a younger crew of characters, right? Basically, <clears throat> set somewhere further in the future, and and again, if you're watching the storyline now, they've fast forwarded they've this jumped, season, yeah, so like six years, right? So. so it's entirely possible it's in the same time frame. They didn't really give details on right, it, right? Right. Um, so. It's primed for crossover between the two, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it, I, I think what you'll find is, if the show's not pulling the kind of ratings that you're looking They're for, gonna get, you're going to get crossovers, right? To try and it's and supposed it. to be not a, like you said, a younger crew it's supposed to be growing up in this, this post apocalyptic time, yeah. You know how the kids are, are dealing with growing up, right? So right. It should so. be interesting. We'll, we'll give it a shot. And it's set to debut sometime in 2020. They haven't given uh, details on when it's expected. Yeah. Cool. So the next thing that we had was an unfortunate piece of Marvel slash Avengers related news. And that was uh, an incident that Scarlett Johansson actually ran into. She had uh, uh, finished an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel's late night show and uh, was leaving the studio and apparently was harassed and followed by five cars full mm. of men in blacked out windows, which, you know, these were obviously paparazzi. Right. Um, and it was a flashback to Princess Diana and, mm-hmm. and the unfortunate and situation. Chased. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, uh, Johansson's uh, security crew had the wherewithal to, to react properly mm-hmm. to this. Uh, they actually detoured instead of going to where she was intended to go. They detoured to a local police precinct, mm-hmm. and they basically waited out uh, the paparazzi at that point in time until they could leave wow. safely and return. Mm. Um, and she came out with a with a very harsh statement against this and the fact that you know these guys are running red lights and mm-hmm. and breaking laws <clears throat> just to try to get a glimpse of her, right? Because they. She was speculating that they were trying to find out what hotel she was staying at. Okay. You know, so they they could get photos and and it's right. like, it's it's just it's not worth it. No, you know? no, it's not. Um, it's not. And you know, it, to a certain extent, you have to blame the pap- paparazzi. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, playing devil's advocate, these guys have a job to do. They're trying to make money. Right. If. The public didn't consume the media. Right. No, I get it. If there wasn't a demand for it, right. you wouldn't have these vultures, you know, right. out there trying to do stuff like right. this. Right. And now you, you know, now it, it kind of makes you feel for, you know, those celebrities that have so many people working for them as security details right. because you don't know, you know, okay, maybe this is just. The paparazzi, but what if it's some, you know, crazy stalker person, sure, yeah. you know, that's out there, you know, you just never know nowadays. So, you know, you have to feel for, you know, for the, the celebrity, you know, yeah, they're out there. Obviously, yeah, they chose that field and, you know, they're popular and, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's an occupational hazard right, right. that comes with celebrity, um, but. Really, it's the public that's mm-hmm. the cause of this. Right. If the public wasn't so obsessed mm-hmm. with getting these types of photos and this type of right. insider information, you know, and it's not like she's elusive. Right. I mean, she does her interview. She mm-hmm. she goes to the events various and events. Right. And, you know, she makes herself available mm-hmm. right. outside of official, mm-hmm. you know, movies and stuff like that. Right. That 
there comes a time where you you kind of have to be satisfied with the level that the the celebrity is going to give you. Right. You know, you you one you don't have a right to invade mm -hmm. their privacy regardless of how how popular that they are. Right, but unfortunately there are people that just aren't mentally there that Right. Think, oh, well, I know you personally because I've watched all of your movies. So right, I right. Like be, I know the person. I'm right. I'm entitled to to, you know, do this or being a paparazzi. Well, you know what? I, you know, all you have to do is smile nice for a picture and I'll, you know, I'll make money. Right. You know, are you going to deny me something so so simple? So, well, and again, yeah, you know, it's not the celebrity's responsibility to provide right. for a, a photographer. Else. Right. You know, it's, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it would be it, it would be a completely different scenario if they abided by right. the law. Right. Yeah, like, I actually have a, a friend. I don't know how much he does it now, but he's out in in the L.A. area, and he's you know one of the he's not what you would call a paparazzi, but he basically goes, you know, when he finds out that a celebrity is going to be staying someplace or whatever, he goes and has photos of them and, and, you know, gets their autographs and gets pictures with them and then, you know, sells it, you know, online. That's his livelihood. But he's never chased anybody down. You know, right. he does it the, the kind way, you know, and if somebody, a celebrity, you know, comes up and doesn't want to partake in it, Okay, have a nice day, you know, right, and right. and doesn't do anything harmful, has never, you know, chased anybody down, you know, so he always feels bad when he hears about stories like this. Yeah. You know, cuz it gives, you know, what he does a, a bad rap. And and I'm a firm believer that if if you're a celebrity and you're in a public venue, then there's a limited expectation of privacy. Mm -hmm. I should be able to take a photo of you if you're in a public venue. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be able to chase you down the street running <laughs> red lights to get right. to you. Right. You know, right. there there are reasonable limitations. Mm -hmm. And and I think, you know, celebrities for, you know, to a large extent, <clears throat> celebrities understand that there's a certain expectation of of exposure to their fans that they have to give. Mhm. Mm um, but there's also an expectation of privacy outside of that professional venue. Right, right. And and the problem we have is there aren't any laws that govern how paparazzi act. Right. Like if someone's driving behind you in a car running red lights to catch up to you. That should. <laughs> I mean, th that's a law. Like right. You don't need a law against paparazzi at that point in time. Right. You just need law enforcement to enforcing the laws. existing right. laws. Yeah. So... Um, she was safe. She did get, she right. did, you know, her yeah, security detail okay. did get her out and uh, she eventually did, did get back to her hotel safely, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, that's all I th think. That's all we had for our mm -hmm. entertainment news. I think that brings us to our insightful peaks. So, my dear, as always, we will start with you. Wow, you are so kind, as always. So, this week's insightful pick for me is not Netflix. <laughs> I wow. know. See, you're really boycotting Netflix <laughs> since they raised their prices, aren't you? <laughs> no, that's not true because I'm catching up on, on Sabrina. So, you know, and I already talked about her. So, if you haven't seen any of uh, this season, it's a fabulous season so far. Um, I'm on episode six, I think there's only nine. So I'm pacing myself because I don't want to finish it because then I'll have nothing else, you know, to watch. Or I can always go back and, you know, rewatch it. Um, but my week, uh, this week's pick for me is actually a show um, that was on Fox um, called The Passage. It was based on a trilogy by the same name. Um, it's a character-driven drama, focuses on... Project NOAA, which is a secret medical facility where scientists are experimenting with a dangerous virus that they're hoping can help cure all diseases, but it could also potentially wipe out the human race. Kind of a vampire-ish feel to it because when a person gets infected with this virus, they basically need to eat, drink blood. Um, 
and they kind of have some similarities. They can't be in the sunlight, but they don't call them vampires because they feel it, it's a virus that can be cured. It's just not fashionable calling it's them vampires. It's not fashionable. Right. Well, some one of the lines in the show was, well, why not just call them vampires? And he was like, but that's not what they are. So, do, um, they, do they have fangs? No, not really. I don't think they have fangs. But they do have, like, the mental capacity to invade your thoughts and dreams and kind of come to you and do suggestive hypnotic things. Do they have ridiculously complex romantic plots? No, not really. Okay. No, no. So not, <laughs> so not really there. Um, it, Like I said, it was based off of a trilogy. Um, they did kind of do a fast forward because it was only 10 episodes. Um, they haven't really talked about whether or not it's going to have a season two or not because they kind of clean things up nicely at the end of it. But the producers and the writers are hoping that maybe it'll get picked up for another season. Uh, it looks like it was on Fox, so you might be able to find it on Fox On Demand. Um, I believe it is also available on Hulu uh, to watch as well. Uh, the first episode was actually back in January, and the final episode was uh, back in March. Um, really, really good show, action pack. You know, again, lots of different characters that you kind of meet, some that you, you know, you kind of know that that's the bad guy, but you kind of feel for him. You kind of understand why, you know, he is the way he is, you know, and some one person who's a bad guy who he really isn't the bad guy. He he was caught the wrong place the wrong time type thing. So overall, it was it was a good episode, uh, a good season, a uh, good series if I can find the right word. So I really enjoyed it, and it would be nice if it gets picked up for a second one. Okay. Cool pick. Thank you. So my insightful pick of the week this week is someplace that I really wish I was right now that I couldn't Aww. go to this year. <laughs> we did go to the last one, mm -hmm. and that is Star Wars Celebration. Uh, 2019 Star Wars Celebration is being held in Chicago uh, from April 11th to the 15th at the McCormick Place. Um, this is the first celebration since Orlando in 2017, which we we did attend. Um, and it's really, it's the ultimate place for Star Wars fans. Oh, absolutely. It's your Disneyland. Uh, it, it is. It really <laughs> is. Uh, between celebrity appearances, you know, they're going to have Hayden Christensen, Paul uh, Bettany from Solo, Forrest Whitaker from Rogue One, Billy D. Williams already made an appearance on the uh, Episode Nine panel, uh, Peter Mayhew, although Peter Mayhew was supposed to be uh, on a panel on Friday, was not feeling well, so mm. he had to cancel for that. Um, and a ton more, obviously. Yeah. Um, we did get the first trailer that was dropped yesterday, which we already saw on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I watched the uh, the episode nine panel. Uh, they introduced all the stars there. Um, told you absolutely nothing about the movie, basically. <laughs> but you were still very um, excited to watch it. Yes, it was. It was. It was entertaining. It was hosted by Peter Colbert. Or not Peter Colbert. Um, who hosted it? Stephen, Stephen Colbert. Colbert. Stephen Colbert. <laughs> I had a break. I'm looking at Peter Mayhew on my notes. That's why. <laughs> Stephen Colbert hosted it. Um, and, you know, he's an ultimate Star Wars geek. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was really, he was asking all the same questions I think I would have asked if I was hosting the panel. Mm -hmm. And watching... Uh, at first, J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm, uh, skillfully dodged the questions is always entertaining. Right, right. Um, not informative, but entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, then they brought out the rest of the cast. They brought out Billy D, um, who was just fan. I mean, he's just so smooth. He really right. is. Um, the uh, Colbert asked him at one point in time, "What did you do to to get back into Lando?" And he he slyly giggles and says, "Lando never left me." <laughs> <laughs> so he was he was so cool. Yeah. Um, Anthony Daniels was there because 
he's in every Star right, Wars. Right, you can't have a Star Wars adventure. movie without him. Yeah. Uh, and then they brought out the new cast, and what was really touching was when they brought out um, uh, the new cast. Uh, we we were introduced to a new character, uh, a new cast member that we didn't see before. But when Anne Marie came out, Anne Marie Tran came out, uh, the whole place went crazy just That's showing awesome. her support. That's awesome. After everything um, that, that she went, with yeah, her. she yeah. went through a lot of uh, abuse. I think after mm -hmm. um, Last Jedi came out, right? Um, JJ paid tribute to her. In fact, mm -hmm. what it was kind of a backhanded compliment or a slap towards Ryan Johnson, but JJ said something to the effect of, well, you know, the one thing that I'm very grateful to Ryan Johnson for was for casting Anne Marie. Mm. Um, he wasn't grateful to anything else that came out of the movie, apparently. <laughs> that was the only thing. <laughs> Thanks. So that was nice. Yeah. That was nice. Um, so there's a couple other things that will be coming out of there that we're expecting to see more on Galaxy's Edge. Disney is supposed to be doing their presentation on Galaxy's today Edge is today. There. Yeah. Uh, then we will see some updates on video games. We should see some footage of Jedi Fallen Order coming out of it, um, and uh, upcoming information on new novels. Um, Lucasfilm Publishing will have Claudia Gray and. Uh, the incomparable Timothy Zahn on a panel. Oh, you talk, love him. Oh, I love Timothy Zahn. He could write the dictionary and I'd still read it. Yes, you would. Um, they have a panel of their own. They're going to be talking about coming out with new novels, supporting not only the new movies, but supporting the TV shows, the live action show, and mm -hmm. all the other shows that will Very be on cool. Disney+. Plus. Um, so... Definitely worth watching. They are streaming the event. All the panels are being streamed on Star Wars' exclusive YouTube channel. Um, or you can go and find out scheduling and information at StarWarsCelebration.com. Um, and that's also what, what's really nice about Celebration is if you don't have that opportunity to be there, you are able to still kind of be a part of it from from you know wherever you are. That's so true. It it's is not like a lot of other conventions where you find out about stuff you know hours later or days later. You can almost find out a lot of the information as, as it's happening. So. Yeah, and and one of the things when you're there, even when you're there, it's difficult to oh yeah get into the panels. They have a lottery system to get into the panels, just like a Comic right, Con. Right. But they stream all the panels. Right, and that's what we ended up doing when we were there two years right. ago for certain things. Or they had the screens up, you know, right. in the so one little Right, so if you can't get on the presentation floor, able, you know. they do have uh, viewing areas available throughout the venue yeah. itself. Yeah. So uh, looking forward to the additional news coming out of mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. Um, I think that was... All that we had today. I think it is. Uh, just a programming note, all of the links to all the resources that we had today are in the show uh, credits that will be rolling. So if you want to visit any of those links, uh, our contact information is also there. Uh, but you can hit us up on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can visit our website at www.insightsintothings.com on YouTube etc etc anything else before we go my dear no i think that is it for us this week all right this was a marathon podcast this week yes it was a lot to talk about but i think we hit everything we needed to talk about and we'll catch everyone next week sounds good thank you very much thank bye. you bye